All right, welcome to Design Prototype Test. This is going to be a super informal uh, episode, one step up from a live uh, broadcast. I'm just going to edit out uh, the boring parts. So um, what we're looking at here is a 3D touch. That is a knockoff BL touch. And I just wanted to do a little recon to see what these things are all about. So I bought these um, to test them out. So I got two of them in the box here. This is the box they came in and this is them plugged in. So plugging them into this Duet control board that I still have yet to install. And let's just plug that in uh, to the computer to power it up and um, see what happens, see if the BL Touch runs. Now I've already updated all the software, or the firmware build. So um, this BL Touch uh, clone should be functioning just fine. And it's not, um, it's doing this weird, red blue thing so if i extend it same deal and if i retract it but if i connect to the board here and then here in my um in my macros i can do fix errors and i can uh, reset the bl touch you can see it stops uh, blinking it does the red and it does the blue um it's yeah there's a faint blue Light in there. there you go, you can see it on screen. So um, that works the way that it's supposed to do, but what it's not doing is the servo control doesn't seem to be functional. Um, so I'll tell you what guys, let's just try out this genuine BL Touch. Now I bought this uh, a year ago, I think it's a year ago now, so I think there's a newer version of this sensor out there. But let's just open this pa package and, uh, and try it out. Oh, look at that. I got the uh, I got the newer version with the plastic uh, tip there, which is pretty cool. Okay. Oh, you know what? This is a newer one. I forgot I ordered a new one of these. Um, so so that's really cool. Okay, let's um let's just plug these wires in. All right, now that that's all plugged in, let's um power up the board once again. That's exactly the way that it's supposed to behave. So that's the little BL Touch, uh, you know, self-diagnostic that it just ran. So um, that's a functional sensor. That's the way things are supposed to go. And this is not working, and it looks like servo control is not working. So because that's not working, um, I'm going to disassemble this one, and let's take a look at how these BL Touch sensors actually work. Oh, look at that, the smart label is inside of the tape somehow. I think I see it right there. It's a little little piece of tape itself right inside of the very... There we go. There's the smart label. <laughs> okay. Um, let's pull this apart. So that's how that comes apart. All right, so next we wanna take out this tiny little screw here. You'll notice that the genuine BL Touch does not have a screw, instead it just has a, um, a heated post. So there was a post there that they pushed uh, onto it with a wire and the post expanded to hold it in place. Um, that's gonna be lighter weight and you want the least amount of weight moving around as possible. So the screw, it may look like an upgrade, but it's actually a downgrade. plastic is kind of weird it's got a texture to it whereas the um, the original BL touch is smooth the whole way I don't know if that means it's cheaper or more expensive or what but my guess is that it's not more expensive <laughs> so that is definitely glued on there as well as put on with the um, with the screw I'm using some serious force there to try to wedge in between the uh, in between the PCB. Oh, I can see. Can you guys see the glue, the shiny glue? There's where the the super glue must have sort of come over the edges. So, yeah. Oh, look at I've totally messed up that tip. That's cute. Um, all right. Well, let's bring in the big guns. All right, we got some serious tools now. 
let's uh let's break into this thing i don't know should we start with the chisel or should we start with the uh with the pokey thing let's uh let's start with the pokey thing well i hear cracking so that super glue must be letting loose a little bit at least um there we go that's done it okay well wow that is super basic i had no idea it was this simple okay so i think that's just a magnetic sensor and then that's going to be a little magnet uh, inside of there so right inside of the plastic right there it's a little magnet that's a magnetic sensor and then my guess is under here is going to be a bunch of uh, copper windings that um yep there we go so that's just your electromagnet and then what happens is the um the magnet gets pushed and pulled away based on the polarity of that so you can just flip the polarity of the windings turns that into an electromagnet which either pushes that magnet away or pulls it back up so if it's pushed away and then the bl touch gets pushed down to the bed it gets pushed up past the uh, past the magnetic sensor right there and that's how it all works pretty simple i would say the complication is primarily in the um in the control board here uh, with these chips um so yeah it is it is a bit smart it's not just a dumb sensor uh, i mean you can clearly see there's some chips that need programming going on there and that's why uh, the protocol to talk to uh, these sensors is a lot more involved than just the dumb on off switch that we're used to like with a end stop switch so there you have it a dysfunctional 3d touch um, that's how it works and i'm going to assume that they mostly cloned the um, the bl touch here so this probably works the same i'm definitely not going to break into my 40 dollar sensor but you know what um, i can see in through this clear plastic and i don't know if you guys can see that too but it's pretty much the same. I'm seeing uh, that magnet inside of the uh, inside of the pin, just like this one, and um, hard to see, but yeah, I can see the faint outline of a chip in there. So it's probably it's probably identical. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me at all. the uh, The PCBs are about the same size. The um, the what do you call these things? The, the clips that plug in are exactly the same. There you go. See it? Already popping in there. Yep. So that is just a clone, and somewhere along the lines, this clone uh, just didn't work. And they're going to ship to you products that just don't work straight out of the box. Um, whereas my BL Touch here is functioning perfectly. So you get what you pay for. Uh, you buy a cheap knockoff version, and it looks like it should work, and it just doesn't. So um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty sick and tired of fighting with um electronics and fighting to get my printer to work it's hard enough setting up a printer as it is when you buy faulty components uh it just makes your life so much harder so yeah it stings these things cost 40 dollars, and these cost like eight and that stings but uh, this one just didn't work for me and i've had uh reports coming in from my patreon supporters that uh, theirs didn't work as well. So you're going to get what you pay for when you buy Chinese clones, and it's immoral. Like I've said before, you're supporting thieves. Look at how close these are. These are This is a 100% a copycat product. They don't know what they did. They don't know why they built this. They didn't think of it. There's no smart engineer behind this. They just saw a product that was successful on the market and said, hey, we can make that, and they used it as a blueprint and just copied it. That's cheating. That's straight up like looking at the guy next to you uh, to get the answers to the test questions. That's just flat out cheating. So don't support cheaters. Don't support thieves. Don't buy knockoffs from China. Let's look at how this is supposed to work with the genuine BL Touch. Um, I'm going to unplug the power, plug it back in, and we see that it goes through its self-test. That's a diagnostic to just make sure that everything works. And once it does, uh, it just retracts and stays red. Here on the computer, I'm connected to the board, and I'm going to go to my BL Touch commands, and I'm going to deploy the probe. And we'll see the probe right here um, move as I deploy it and as I retract it. So that is the correct functionality. Uh, we know that it does 
everything it's supposed to do. So let's unplug this, uh, unplug the board here from power, and we will unplug the BL Touch. And then we will put in this other um, 3D Touch that I did not break. Disassemble to try to figure out how it works. Okay, so now that I've got this plugged in, let's try powering it on by um, plugging it in. And it immediately pops an error. Through the web interface here, let's just reset the, uh, the BL Touch, which will stop the light blinking. And then we can go BL Touch commands, we can deploy it, nothing. And retracting it, nothing. Just starts popping that error. These don't work, these ones do. So well worth the money to get something that works. The final thing here to talk about is the wiring. You can see here, I've got these uh, male pins here plugging into the female ends on this connector that plugs into the sensor. So that goes in there like so. And that's how it should work. Um, you should connect it just like that. The extended wiring that came in the box has uh, both ends which are female. So how are you supposed to plug in uh, to this, to the shorter loom here with the with the sensor connector. These are female as well. So you have three female connectors. Uh, this is like a lesbian menage a trois. I don't know how that works. Also, the way that you can tell the genuine BL Touch from the clones, if it's not just super obvious by the name, this is BL Touch, whereas that is 3D Touch. Um, but just look on the PCBs, you will see this QR code and that's the, uh, that's the high quality one that you want. That's the one that you know will work.